everybody. Welcome to our win class. This one is going to be about bridges. So your goal for this win class is going to be to build a bridge that can hold the most amount of weight but costs the less. So we'll be talking about how much your materials cost like a paper or a paper clip or whatever it is that you want to use. All right, here's a quick video clip to get you started with a little bit of knowledge about bridges. And bridges can be really busy. Take, for example, what's said to be the world's busiest bridge, the George Washington Bridge in New York City. Look at all those cars and trucks. It has to be pretty sturdy to carry so many people and cars. For a bridge to carry that much weight, it has to be built of special material like iron and steel. But it takes more than tough materials to make a strong bridge. So let's look at how bridges work. One very simple kind of bridge is called a beam bridge. It can be just a log that you use to walk across a stream. Or put a long strip of cardboard between two short blocks. That's a beam bridge too. All bridges can hold a certain amount of weight. Over time, people have learned that certain shapes can be used to make stronger bridges. Take a look at this railroad bridge. It has to be strong because it carries trains. What shape do you see? That's right, triangles. And that's not by accident. The fact is, triangles are really strong shapes for building. If you put force on one side of a triangle, it bends. But if you put force on its point, it keeps its shape. That's because the two sides of the triangle are pushed down by the force, and the bottom gets stretched out to both sides. Each side feels the force, but none of them bends. And this makes the triangle a really sturdy and stable shape. This is why you'll see lots of triangles and bridges, both above the part that you actually travel on, called the deck, and below it. The long string of triangles that you see in a bridge is called a truss. Trusses help a bridge spread out the weight that it has to carry. But not all bridges are made of trusses. If a bridge has to cross a really wide body of water, it might be too difficult or expensive to build a truss bridge. So engineers design another kind of bridge called a suspension bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge in California is a great example of a suspension bridge. Suspension bridges work by using a force called tension. Tension is just pulling something tight. Suspension bridges are made of a deck that's hard or suspended from thick cables that stretch from one side of the bridge to the other. These cables are supported by tall towers and then are held down tightly or anchored on both ends. Suspension bridges are strong because the force on the bridge gets spread out. The weight of the cars or trains or horses, whatever is traveling across it, pulls on the cables, creating tension. Those cables then pull down on the towers and also pull on the anchors on either end of the bridge to hold up the deck. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video clip. So I wanted to go through really quickly for you the five types of bridges. And I know she went over a few before. So she talked about the beam bridge, which is the simplest, just a log across the river. There's a few pictures here for you. There's something called an arch bridge, um, and these are what you see, those half circles. Those are the ones that support the weight. The suspension bridge, which she went over, which she was talking about the Golden Gate Bridge and the cables for support. There's something called a cantilever bridge. Cantilevers are beams or structural framework, which you can see here in the picture below. They are fixed at one end and free on the other. And this is very similar to a diving board. Most flex or bending takes place in the middle, so the deepest part of the bridge should be the middle. There's also something called a cable stayed bridge. They're supported by a series of cable. Each is a leg of a triangle and extends from a tower. They are straight and anchored directly to the roads. This is very similar to the one you see in Boston. Here's one more video clip for you. Hang tight. Number three, Sydney Harbour Bridge, Sydney, Australia. The Premier Jack Lang went ahead and officially opened the bridge, initiating a fortnight of celebrations with splendor would not have disgraced Imperial Rome. Known also by its nickname, the Coat Hanger, this steel through arch bridge is actually one of the longest and widest in the world carrying pedestrians, cyclists, trains, and cars. Opened in March of 1932 and praised for having kept many citizens employed during the Great Depression, it has seen many festivals and ceremonies, including the Sydney 2000 Olympics, as well as the Bicentennial Australia Day celebrations. With steel work that weighs in at around 53,000 tons, it is used daily by thousands who travel between the Sydney Central Business District and the North Shore. Sydney Harbour is truly a jewel. Number two, Tower Bridge, London, England. The most recognized symbol for this city is the Tower Bridge. Completed in 1894 after eight years of construction, this combination of a bascule and suspension bridge spans the River Thames and is one of the most visited monuments in Europe. 
Commonly mistaken for London Bridge, this symbol of London boasts a length of some 800 feet and is crossed by around 40,000 people a day. Beginning in 2008, the bridge underwent a £4 million renovation that ended just in time for it to be featured as part of the celebration of the 2012 Olympics and Paralympics. Number 1. The Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco, USA. The Golden Gate Bridge beckons as a shining example of how engineering and architectural design can work together to transform functionality into artistry. The most photographed bridge in the world, and arguably one of the most beautiful, this internationally recognizable suspension bridge has been called one of the wonders of the modern world. Opened in 1937, it crosses the Golden Gate Strait and, since completion, has appeared in dozens of songs, books, and television shows. Appearing in countless movies as well, it's been the setting of timeless classics, seen fierce battles, and been destroyed too many times to recall. In short, it's one of the most popular and enduring symbols of the United States. But it represents much more than an impressive engineering achievement. It stands as a tribute to the concept of community, the daring of those who erected it, and the belief that all things are possible. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. So now what's next is you're going to need to design your bridge and create a list of materials, and we'll actually start construction on it tomorrow. So remember, your goal is to create the bridge that will hold the most amount of weight but cost the least amount of money to build.